change your idea of leadership? When you think about that word, what are some images that come to mind? Leadership. Is it maybe an office building? Maybe a conference room? Or maybe you picture yourself in front of a large group of employees. But what if leadership isn't something we just do at work? What if leadership isn't anything more complicated than kindness and basic human interaction? And the skills we need to get the best out of our teams at work are the same skills to just extend kindness when someone needs it the most. In the early days of my career, I, had, I was very fortunate. I had an amazing mentor. His impact on my life has been and continues to be immeasurable. I credit him with getting me hooked on all things leadership. I've read dozens of books, watched all the TED Talks, <laughs> even participated in a year-long immersion program with the University of Washington. Leadership, put quite simply, is my jam. <laughs> there is no higher compliment than when someone reaches out to me just, for, just to ask for some advice, and I love to play the role of office therapist <laughs> as people confide their professional fears, frustrations, and aspirations in me. Recently, though, I had an experience that rocked me to my core, caused me to question everything I believed about leadership. I had a random encounter on an airplane with a stranger. In my role as chief operating officer of a rapidly growing organization, I spend a lot of time on stage. Sarah, the COO, is gregarious, charming, full of energy, and loves people. <laughs> Sarah, the person, prefers her jammies, her Netflix, and her cone of silence. <laughs> yes. My job requires me to be a frequent flyer, which isn't nearly as glamorous as you might think. And airports and airplanes are places where you can be surrounded by tons of people, yet also be completely alone. It can be unnerving for some novices, but for some experts, using your headphones to block out your surroundings, maybe, you know, recharge your battery, watch a quick show, can be the dose of medicine that you need to save your sanity. And for whatever reason, I'm one of those people that strangers like to talk to. <laughs> I normally just smile politely and wait for them to finish, and then I get back to whatever I was doing. And I'm pretty good at giving them just enough attention so that I don't appear rude, but not so much that I'm really invested in whatever it is they're saying. <laughs> but this day was different. On this day, I had my business suit, my carry-on, and my headphones. And as I approached my seat, I broke the cardinal rule. I made eye contact. <laughs> I heard it. I made eye contact. And she offered me some words of encouragement about being a short woman in high heels, shoving my carry-on in the overhead space. I smiled politely and said, thank you. And then thought, how quickly can I get those headphones into position? Before I could get my ears covered, though, she said something else warm and kind. And I was so distracted thinking, oh, why is this woman talking to me? I don't even remember what it was. What I do remember with mind-boggling clarity is realizing that I needed to make a choice. I could either ignore this woman or I could engage her in conversation. When I was 31 years old, I lost my husband to cancer. And what I learned about human behavior in the year following his passing changed my life. The most important thing that I learned is that the vast majority of people struggle to think about anything through someone else's eyes or to really consider how someone else might feel. So, picture us. I'm sitting next to Jackie on the plane. I, I, engage, I decided I was going to talk to her, right? I put my headphones in my bag. I turned myself toward her, learned her name was Jackie, found out that she loved horses, and she was going through a terrifying health crisis. So as I sat there, 
I listened to her, and she shared with me that she was going through a battery of tests to determine whether or not she had cancer. She shared with me her symptoms, her family's reaction, and her fear. I shared the story of my husband, and I told her how to navigate the healthcare system. I told her what questions she should ask, and Jackie cried. I reached over, and I took her hand, and I just sat there with her in her emotions. I didn't think about anything. I didn't think about the emails that were piling up. Really, all I thought about is that circumstances put me next to a woman who was in desperate need of kindness, comfort, and compassion. By the end of the flight, Jackie's grip on my hand started to loosen. And as we landed, we exchanged phone numbers and parted ways. It was some time later in a quiet moment that I thought, huh, maybe that is leadership. Not the kind of leadership that you're going to read about in all the business books. A different kind of leadership. One where you can lead a person. One person can lead another person from one mental or emotional place to another. And as I thought about as I reflected on that experience, I thought about the fate that had to occur for Jackie to be seated next to someone that understood the intricacies of healthcare and of cancer treatment. But what really struck me is how close I came to missing it. I had to make a decision in a second. Was I going to be Sarah the COO or Sarah the introvert? I desperately wanted to put my headphones in disconnect from the world, and recharge my battery. But a voice from inside me caused me to lean into her. The voice of the widow that had suffered her own feelings of fear and powerlessness shoved me out of my cone of silence and offered to help her shoulder that burden, even if it was just for 90 minutes. When Jackie called me some weeks later to tell me the outcomes of her tests, I was stunned, thrilled that she was healthy, but shocked that with everything going on in her life, she would call me a complete stranger. I listened to her voicemail more than once where she thanked me again for my kindness on the day that we met. I even played the voicemail for some of my friends who did not believe this story. <laughs> And since then, I've thought about the impact we can have on anyone at any time. Human interaction is a fascinating thing to experience if only we can step outside of ourselves and experience it. We trade energy all day long, positive and negative, with, with people, right? And every person we encounter, we leave a little bit of ourselves behind, kind of like a fingerprint. What does your fingerprint look like? I like to think that I was the leader on the day that I met Jackie, that I led her from bottled up emotion and fear to a more peaceful place. I like to think that the fingerprint I left on her life was light and calming and a reminder that kindness exists in unexpected places. But I don't want you to just think about what I gave Jackie. I want you to think about what Jackie gave me. Her fingerprint on my life challenged the way that I understood leadership, a topic that I thought I had mastered. My 90 minutes with her taught me that anyone, everyone, at some point will need a leader. And anyone at anywhere at any time, has the opportunity to be one. They may not show up at the door of your office, but they will show up. And all you need to do is put your headphones away and see where it leads. Thank you.